Hey guys, Rollout here, and welcome back to Builder's Block. I am just scatterbrained today for some reason. It's like my brain is trying to catch up with the words coming out of my mouth, and I'm finding it hard to articulate things I want to say, so bear with me. It scooby doo be like that sometimes. It took me way longer to record this episode than it should have, so if you want to support that trial and error, don't forget to check out my Patreon page where I post content almost every single day. Also, don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. I really appreciate it. Now, let's try and get this done before I go crazy. On the first day, I've decided to continue my Dimensional Robo Die Dragon project, starting with the legs. I think if I am going to finish this project, I need to take it in smaller, more manageable sections. Because I am used to building at a smaller scale, this is one of the largest things I have ever attempted to build, and the legs seemed like the next simplest thing to tackle. It turns out that Die Dragon has some weird bird feet. Uh, you don't see these on the original card art. They only make an appearance on the alternate V-Series reboot version of the card. Uh, and they're kind of weird, but here they are. I'm already starting to see some problems with this design if I am expecting them to support the mass of Die Dragon's wings. Uh, cause as is, I don't think these are going to cut it. I have had the foresight, uh, to add some ratchets, uh, to the middle of the leg here. They also attach to the body a little bit further back on ratchets so that none of the weight, uh, is supported by that larger front section of the leg. Uh, but yeah, I think that the clips in the ankle will definitely be a problem if I want Die Dragon to stand upright. We will solve that problem once we get there, though. The thing is, is that Die Dragon is almost always levitating, so if I wanted to, I could just put it up on a stand and call it a day, but we'll see. You can see that some of the parts aren't properly colored. It's got some gray in the foot that should be yellow. I just don't have those pieces at the moment. Uh, here is the leg with the rest of Die Dragon so far, and you can start to visualize what it's going to look like complete. But something that I have realized as I build this model is that uh, my LEGO collection isn't really equipped to build at this scale. Because I build in a smaller scale, uh, my LEGO inventory is kind of tailored to build smaller. and. Only this far into Die Dragon, I have started to run out of things that I thought I'd never run out of. Uh, plates and tiles and clips. And right now, I don't really have a good way to replenish. Bricks and Minifigs is closed for quarantine. Uh, ordering from Bricklink is a little bit unreliable right now, especially internationally. Uh, so I'm going through kind of a parts crisis, and I'm not sure what to do. Of course, I could continue building Die Dragon in rainbow colors and then uh, color coordinate it later on, and I might have to, uh, but right now I think I'm going to shelve this project until after the quarantine, whenever that may be. Whenever it's easier for me uh, to get the parts that I need to finish it. So taking a break from this for a little while, I consulted the internet for inspiration, and I stumbled across a builder named Ryan Howerter, who is a master at very interesting Lego techniques. They're doing this series on Instagram right now where they are posting Lego puzzles, for lack of a better word, that look impossible and you kind of have to figure out how they're built and then they post the answers for them later in the week. Some really fascinating stuff. One of the techniques that I thought was really cool is that you can take one of these Kylo Ren crossguard elements and stick them into to the bottom of a two by one brick in the older style here. And it's just, it's just kind of neat. I didn't
didn't really know what to do with this connection aside from building this uh, simple warhammer. Uh, it's definitely very illegal. Uh, it does stress that brick ever so slightly, uh, but it is cool nonetheless. Another interesting technique I discovered uh, is involved in this cube here. Uh, it's got some really cool snot technique on the side there, so you can see the vertical uh, plates. It's a completely studless cube. It's just very pleasing to look at. And this is achieved using uh, these uh, hinge elements internally that also... Uh, provide a connection point to attach the top and the bottom of the cube. Just some really, really cool stuff. Here is another really pleasing technique. This is a completely studless rectangle here that is only four plates high. And uh, it's one of those things that you don't necessarily know how it's done uh, until it's revealed to you. And it's, it's quite simple. It just uses these half plate half tile elements uh, the the one by fours there i'm not entirely sure what those are called but it sort of weaves them together uh to to lock uh, one plate to another so that you have this snot uh, surface you have studs on both sides and it's really really cool now i decided to use this technique use this principle and create another cube here uh, with with plates and with tiles and and uh, it's very similar to the one before. The dimensions are exactly the same, uh, but it's just a lot cleaner and I think has a lot more potential uh, for detail and for variation on all of the plated sides. Now, obviously, I am a big Bionicle fan, and so my first thought was that I could potentially turn this into a Nuva Cube. And so here is my attempt. Now, this is kind of a dormant Nuva Cube. The symbols on its surface are supposed to glow, and that's not quite represented here. But I just built it in gray colors because that was easy to do. Uh, these parts are plentiful, and I just wanted to prove the concept. Now, if you're not familiar with Bionicle, long story short, the Nuva Cube is kind of a relic that serves as a lock for the prison that the Toa create for the queens of the Borok. And the Borok want to use this to channel the Toa Nuva's powers and unlock their queens. It has symbols that represent all six of the Toa on its surface. Now, I think some of these symbols are hit or miss in my recreation of the Nuva Cube here just because of the limitations of the build. So, We'll go over each of these individually. First, we have Pohatu symbol on top. I think that one's pretty good. It looks the part. Same for Kopaka's Nuva symbol on the left here. I think those are the two best Nuva symbols on this entire cube. On the right, you have Gali's symbol, which is a little bit of a stretch. It's supposed to be kind of this angular swirl, and I think that's just a little bit too intricate for this simple tiled surface. So it's kind of the right shape. If you squint, it sort of looks right, but uh, that's about the best I can offer without a sticker or printed detail. Now this, I think, is the best side of the Nuva Cube, because a couple of the other Nuva symbols, I think, are pretty rough. On top, we have Tahu's symbol, which is very simple. That's pretty hard to screw up. I think that one looks pretty good. On the right, we have Onua's, which I think is very much in the same camp as Gali's. If you squint, it sort of looks like the right shape, but it's definitely lacking some detail just because of the surface that I had to build it on. Finally, we have Liwa's Nuva symbol, which is easily the worst of the bunch. Liwa's symbol is actually the most complex of the six, and there were just a lot of lines and a lot of details that I could not fit onto this surface. As is, it's pretty much just subservient to the other Nuva symbols around it. It feeds into Onua's symbol, it feeds into Gali's symbol, and then it feeds into Pohatu's symbol on the bottom. And I think it does that well, but on its own, it doesn't really hold up. Even if you squint, it doesn't really look quite right. Now, I've always thought that Liwa's Nuva symbol kind of looks like a frowny face, and this certainly does, but... 
It's certainly missing some details that make it recognizable, I think. Uh, and it ends up just sort of looking like a Minecraft face, like a creeper or a cow. Uh, no matter how you look at it, it's just not quite right. Fortunately, though, in most of the promotional images and all of the Bora Call advertisements, uh, the Nuva Cube is in a very specific orientation, and almost always, Liwa's Nuva symbol ends up on the bottom. So, uh, it just so happens that the worst side of this Nuva Cube is probably the least visible one, at the very least. Here it is internally. You can see it uses that same like weaving technique to put it together here. Although I did need to cut out uh, a couple of the plates just to fit in certain details. And because of that, it ends up being a little bit wiggly, which is kind of unfortunate. Here it is up on a stand. Uh, in the story, it kind of sits in the Borok nest on a, a pillar of light. And so I've kind of represented that with this clear stand here. On the next day, I played around with some different color schemes. The one in the middle is a little bit closer to how it looks in a lot of those promotional images. And then the one on the right is a little closer to how it looks in the comics. Here it is compared to the Borok call. And I probably should mention that at one point on rollout reviews, I said I wouldn't be buying the Borok call because I'm not a big fan of them. And that's still true. I'm not a fan of the saga in the story that the Bora Call are from. I also think that the Nuva Cube is just kind of a stupid underexplained concept. And so it's kind of a surprise that I put so much time and effort into perfecting the Nuva Cube here. But uh looks cool, right? Uh, and yes, I did end up buying the Bora Call close to the last Lego convention. Uh, I, I found them for cheap. And I couldn't say no. And now I have them. Will you see a review of them? Probably not. At least not a serious one. I have been thinking of, of doing kind of a joke review that's only 20 seconds. Basically just saying, yep, more Borok. But uh, that would be my first Bionicle review in like five years. So I don't know how uh, how the audience would take to that. I, they might just be happy that they're seeing another Bionicle review, even if it's kind of a joke. Anyway, I think this scale compared to a Borok is just about perfect. I also think that the color scheme here is a little bit better than before, but something about it just isn't quite right. I think that the contrast between the dark gray and the white might be a little bit too striking. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it might be that this version of the Nuva Cube here doesn't have quite as much dimensionality as it's supposed to. In reality, the Nuva symbols are supposed to be etched into its surface a little bit further, uh, and so maybe something about the fact that this is more two-dimensional is making that look off. Whatever the case, I think there's still room to improve here. Of course, there's also the more comic book accurate version. In the comics, the color of the Nuva Cube is pretty wild. It's like a, a bright blue color with thin orange etchings in it, and uh, I could probably make all of the gray parts here kind of a medium blue, and it would technically be more accurate. But once again, I'm not sure how I feel about that contrast, especially once again, uh, when the cube is more two-dimensional than it should be. It just wouldn't look quite right, and personally, I think that this light gray does a bit of a better job. This probably still isn't the Nuva Cube that I'll display on my shelf, uh, but it, it is an interesting experiment, and it is an option if you prefer the way the cube looks in the comics. Now, another thing I did on this day was kind of rework the cube internally. As cool as the technique on the right is, uh, like I said, it does wiggle a little bit, and there is a more obvious solution. You've probably seen this technique on the left here, and it actually works just fine uh, to achieve exactly the same thing in actually a more simple way. Uh, so I decided to go with that. 
The one thing about this technique on the left here is that it's legal. And again, if you feel like uh, illegal techniques aren't your thing, some people are a stickler about that, uh, then, then the one on the right is an option. It still is possible uh, without using an illegal technique. On the next day, I decided to uh, go with a softer tone for the Nuva symbols and make them blue. And yes, it does look a little bit like a Minecraft diamond block, but uh, if you know it's supposed to be the Nuva cube, then I think it's still recognizable as the Nuva cube, even though uh, while the glowing Nuva symbols in all the promotional images do have a blue tint to them, they aren't quite as blue as this. I still think it looks pretty good though, and for now, I think this is how I'm going to leave it. Unfortunately, it turns out I do not have very much of this medium blue color, and again, I'm in a parts crisis. I needed to dismember so many creations to make this possible. Uh, for science, I needed to pull apart uh, Alpha, the Megazord, a uh, couple of quick stops. It, it was a mess, uh, and I will probably replace those pieces right after this. Uh, but I just wanted to see what this looked like, and now I'm going to have to make a BrickLink order. I'm going to have to wait to go to Bricks and Minifigs so that I can uh, complete this this model without having to steal parts from all of those other things. It's kind of a mess on my work table right now, but uh, here it is. And I think it paid off. Like I said, I think this looks pretty good. Here are the two uh, Nuva cubes together, the promotional accurate one on the right and the comic book accurate one on the left. One other thing I decided to do on this final day was attempt the actual proper Nuva symbols uh, that attach to the cube in the comics. And I don't think this turned out very well. Like, it, it's pretty cool for a picture or two, but it just isn't functional enough to make it worth it, I think. And only a couple of the Nuva symbols are possible to build in this style. I made it black and red, once again, just because those are the parts I had. If I had the parts to make this in gray, I probably would have, uh, but it has issues. It doesn't attach to the cube proper, and if I were to build six of these symbols, they wouldn't all attached to the cube together. On top of that, I don't even think some of these symbols are possible to make in this style, so it just has so many issues. I don't care enough to make it work properly, and so I'm, I'm probably not going to pursue this idea. Uh, one other thing I think is funny is that there's no way for the Borak call to hold on to these symbols. So in that last picture, I actually had to stick it to Galakal's uh, shield with a little bit of sticky tack. Did that feel different? I think I'm at a point where I don't know if I'm acting normal or not. Am I talking too loud? It is a mood this week. I need to take a nap or something. But we made it through. Special thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, especially my leader class patrons, Val Raven and Beyond the Brick. Until next time, this has been Rollout, signing off.